womp womp doo. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Games to here. This is the quick guide for Heroic Tortoise. If you want the full guide with a lot more detail, please click on the annotation there. And with that, let's get started. For your raid composition, you'll want probably two tanks and two healers. The amount of damage that the raid takes is very low on this encounter, especially once you get used to the patterns as a healer. Uh, so two healers is plenty. And as for tanking, it depends a little bit on how you handle bats. But the easiest way for just learning this encounter is to use two tanks. It's especially uh, useful if one of your tanks is a monk tank to handle the bats, which we'll talk about in a moment. So the first thing to note is that on Heroic, the damage of Quake Stomp is very high. In fact, it will deal damage equal to 100% of every player's health pool at the time. So if you have no form of damage reduction or anything that will prevent you from taking some damage, Quick Stomp will one-shot you, no matter what your health is at. So to deal with that, there is a new mechanic called Crystal Shell, which we'll talk about now. So Crystal Shell is the new mechanic on Heroic. It's kind of interesting. Uh, essentially, when you attack one of the humming crystals on the outside of the room, you will gain a debuff called Crystal Shell that lasts for a minute. And this basically applies an absorption effect, similar to Power Word Shield from Priests, that absorbs damage. Uh, initially, this will absorb 15% of your health and damage. However, once you have Crystal Shell active, any healing that you receive uh, no longer heals your health pool, but instead increases the absorption value of Crystal Shell. The Crystal Shell Absorb can go up to a maximum of 75% of your maximum health. So, if you are full health, your actual health is full, and then you apply Crystal Shell by attacking a Humming Crystal, then your healers heal you up uh, so that the absorption increases to the max, you'll effectively have 175% of your max health. And this, is, of course, is 75% more than the Quake Stomp damage. So the combination of Quake Stomp plus some other random miscellaneous damage will not kill you. That's the basic idea of this entire encounter. So for the most part, everyone will want to keep Crystal Shell active at all times. Um, so as soon as you engage the fight, you just attack a Humming Crystal, and then your healers heal everyone up so that the absorptions get up to their max. And then when Quake Stomp hits, at worst, you'll only go down to 75% of your actual health because the absorption plus 25% of your health is equal to the 100% of Quake Stomp. That's the basic idea. Uh, so... The other thing to keep in mind is that if you apply Crystal Shell while your health is low, then any heals will not increase your health. It will only go to the shield. So ideally, you only want to apply Crystal Shell to yourself when your health is high or at max. So the general rule we use is if you're above 90% health, then you don't have Crystal Shell active, you should apply it. But if you're below 90%, then you wait until you're healed up above 90% by your healers and then apply the crystal shell. So just keep that in mind throughout the fight and you'll be gold. I also want to briefly note that crystal shell management for tanks is important and slightly different than the rest of the raid, especially your tank that's on Tortos. Um, so this player should be near a humming crystal throughout most of the fight. And they have to be very quick about timing when they attack a Humming Crystal in between the melee attacks and special attacks of Tortos, because they do not want to have the shell applied while they're at 50% health or something. You want to be at full health when you apply it as a tank. And uh, so our Paladin tank that's on Tortos engages the fight and usually waits for melee swings plus his first special attack on the tank to go off. And then between the next melee swings, he'll apply the shell while he's full health. So that from that point forward, our healers are able to pretty much keep the shell on the tank throughout most of the fight. And he's never at risk. So the whirl turtles work just like they do on normal. They'll spawn underneath Tordos and chase random ranged members. And they can be slowed and whatnot. And when you kill them, you kick the shell into Tordos to interrupt his stone breath. Uh, so that's all the same as normal. The only thing you want to 
be careful about is to make sure that you kill that first shell that comes out right at the start very quickly so that you have a um, shell able to be kicked for that first breath because it occurs quite fast. After that, you'll just want to focus on shells with an appropriate amount of DPS to kill them before the next set. So generally, we have three range DPS focus on shells, and then we have three DPS focus on the boss. And that seems like a good balance. So lastly, bat management is very important on Heroic. Uh, now, as I mentioned in raid composition, if you have a monk tank, that player has a unique ability to kite the bats that most other tanks probably cannot do. And this is because of the dizzying haze ability, which allows them to throw a keg uh, at a distance that s slows things in an AE radius. So that's what we do in this clip here. You'll see our monk tank running around with the bats. So essentially, every time a bat set spawns, if you have a rogue or hunter, someone that can misdirect threat to the monk tank that's kiting, that's really useful for the new set of bats. But otherwise, your monk tank simply throws their keg onto the new set of bats and continuously uh, adds kegs to the existing bats as they run around the outside of the room. If they do this properly, they should never get meleeed by the bats, and then the only damage they'll take is Quake Stomp and then incidental uh, world turtle hits if they aren't able to dodge them all. However, it's very volatile. If your tank is not good at kiting, uh, they will die almost instantly if they get in melee range. So make sure your tank is capable of kiting if they try to do this method. If you do not have a monk tank, then you'll have to deal with the bats in normal method, which again just involves kiting, or excuse me, tanking them like you might normally do. Um, the key here again is crystal shell. So the bats will do heavy, heavy damage if the tank's health spikes down. So it's really important that that bat tank keeps their crystal shell active, and then when they actually tank a new set of bats, try to use stuns and damage reduction cooldowns so that the damage they take does not lower their health too much, and they keep their shell going. Meanwhile, your healers should focus on spamming that tank so that that absorb uh, is active. And if you do that properly, then you can just AE the bats down pretty easily, uh, usually you'll want to use TPS that are not focused on World Turtles to deal with the bats. Now, once Tortoise's health gets pretty low in this fight, he will start to spawn World Turtles at a much faster rate. So it's a good idea to save your big DPS cooldowns for the end of the encounter, and once he reaches a certain threshold of health, whatever's good for your raid, uh, you'll want to focus on killing Tortoise before you become overwhelmed with turtles, because killing the world turtles at that point is pointless. So for us, that was around 30% health. So when he reaches 30%, we just finish off whatever set of world turtles happen to be active at the time, and then we use bloodlust and all that stuff, and all DPS focus on Tortos at that point just to burn him down before we become overwhelmed. And that's pretty much it. So that is the quick guide to heroic Tortos. As usual, if you want more info, check out the full guide. Otherwise, thank you very much, and if you enjoyed, please subscribe.